We're living in a golden age of video game graphics. It just keeps getting better. And to me, one of the best benchmarks of good graphics is Night. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games with insane Night graphics. Let's start off at number 10 with Cyberpunk 2077. Honestly, what better game to start off the list with? It's literally set in Night City, so better be pretty good looking Night graphics in this one, right? Well, CD Projekt Red obviously went all out on this one. The fully ray traced lighting and reflections make nighttime in Night City some of the most striking visuals in any video game, period, especially for an open world game with a full day and night cycle. It's not baked in, it's designed to look good at any time of the day, but obviously it's in the dark where the visuals really start to shine. Night City is sort of like Las Vegas. During the day, it's a little bit of a dusty trash dump, but at night, it turns into a neon paradise. Few games manage to combine technically impressive graphics and art design like this one. Uh, some of the views, especially in Dogtown, uh, the new area added in Phantom Liberty, they are just jaw-dropping at night. There are some amazing vistas to just look around and take in, but what really makes Cyberpunk's night really sing is when you wander into some abandoned section of town in the middle of the night and just walk. Like, few games really capture that lonely, noir, but neon feel the way Cyberpunk does. Looking for something? Won't find it here. Nothing to find. Moving on to number nine. Uh, I mean, somebody's probably going to say this is recency bias talking, but honestly, Alan Wake 2 could easily be number one on this list. If we're just talking technology and graphics from a purely technical perspective, this is the best bar none. It is a technical showpiece and one of the best looking games of 2023, maybe all time, no question. It looks impressive at all times. And I'll even say the fact that they're able to make overcast blah look cool and art directed is impressive, but it's nighttime that Remedy really shows off. The first Alan Wake uh, it is still pretty impressive impressive in terms of lighting for as old a game as it is. It was kind of a technical marvel back then, but Alan Wake 2 blows it and basically everything else out there just out of the water. The way this game depicts how light diffuses in the darkness is probably the most realistic I've ever seen. Even the parts that are meant to be visually disorienting and not appear real, it just, it, it evokes realism in a way I just haven't seen in a game. The more extreme lighting effects hit in Alan Wake sections, the deep reds of neon signs uh, cutting through the oppressive darkness, but the, probably the best graphics in the game are the more realistic Saga Anderson portions, where the night just isn't visually interesting, it's oppressive. Like I said, like the overcast daytime in this day is visually impressive, and that carries over so much into the Saga Anderson night portions of this game. Near the end of the story, you're exploring the normally idyllic town of Bright Falls at night, and nothing's really changed, but all the shops are closed, and all that's illuminating the streets is this dim orange sodium vapor type streetlight look, and it just looks like hell on earth. The only thing holding it back are the performance issues. Like, there are some bugs in this game, in all seriousness. And beyond that, uh, it's one of those games that kind of makes PlayStation 5 feel old. It's very technically impressive, but you kind of need to be running it on a supercomputer. I mean, I I'm really fortunate to have a nice, beefy gaming PC to play this game at a decent frame rate with all the ray tracing and shit enabled. I mean, I'm not doing it 4K, I'll say that, but uh, still, man, this is just the most impressive thing out there. At number eight is Spider-Man 2, another 2023 offering that really blew me away with its nighttime visuals. Spider-Man 2 somehow managed the impossible uh, of creating a game that always ray traces, always runs well, and doesn't sacrifice crisp visuals. And like a lot of recent games, it really is the ray tracing that makes this one sing. With Venom as the primary antagonist and the story getting darker, just because of his presence, it was always gonna probably have more of a focus on night with his entry, and Insomniac, a company probably appropriately named for the job really stepped it up 
Miles Morales had some amazing things happening with the graphics at night, but Spider-Man 2 takes it all to the next level. There's parts where you're battling enemies at night in the rain where it's hard to believe what I'm looking at. The detailed environments, the totally stable frame rate, the set piece moments that just happen while you're playing, it's all this is total assault on the senses that feels impossible, but they pull it off. Some of the cutscenes are even technically more amazing. Just look at the lighting in some of these scenes. It's it's never that dark. I mean, this is one of the biggest cities in the world, so there's a lot of light pollution. So in comparison to the lot of the other games on this list, it never actually gets super dark. But a lot of open world games get pretty ugly at night, especially ones that kind of zip by as fast as this one. But Spider-Man 2 is a visual feast at night. I mean, it's pretty amazing looking during the day, but seriously, look at this game at night. It's amazing. And number seven is the Resident Evil 4 remake. Yet another 2023 game. We kind of have to get out of the way at the start because otherwise they would just dominate the list. Like I said, Alan Wake, probably the most technically impressive period but all these things are kind of recent and have some pretty severe hardware advantages going but uh yeah resi 4 is a visual stunner that has its fair share of ray tracing effects it can be turned on separately from your standard performance modes on console but what really makes it pop is the art design rather than the photorealistic visuals of the saga anderson portions of alan wake 2 set in large more open environments resi 4 remake mostly sticks to the original game's design with compact areas is that are relentlessly crafted and designed. The nighttime sections of the game are some of the moodiest the series has ever had, and that's saying a lot. Resident Evil games have always been cutting edge with the visuals, but this really goes out of its way to show off, and in doing so, they've created some incredible nighttime scenes. And number six is Batman Arkham Knight, a game that's actually kind of starting to show its age in some ways, which is shocking. But when it comes to night, few games match up with this. Every Batman game up to this one is a showcase for some impressive art design. But Arkham Knight is the first to go full open world in an entire city that you can explore by gliding or in the Batmobile. <laughs> And you'd think this increase in scale would make it less detailed and interesting compared to Arkham City, but it's actually the opposite. The city is more dense and detailed than ever before. Everything feels unique and handcrafted in a way few open world games manage to accomplish, but Rocksteady makes it look easy with this one. It's also set entirely at night, so with no daytime to worry about, the devs were able to craft everything to look as good as possible in the darkness, and they succeeded with flying colors. Nobody's ever going to mistake Gotham City and Arkham Knight for a real place, but it's so visually interesting and dense, it does not matter. Again, it doesn't have some of the benefits of incredible hardware and a lot of the technique that has been developed since, but man oh man, is it a game that's been crafted by some extremely talented artists who I can't help but walk away impressed by the work of. It is really, really an impressive game. Poor Batman. He's lost all his, uh, what do you call it, uh, mistake. And number five is Dying Light. In most open world games, the night is kind of a slightly more annoying day. Not the case with Dying Light, which uh, it does everything it can to make darkness oppressive and terrifying, and it works really well. But you know how most of these types of games are, where maybe the night is darker, but you can still see just fine. The world gets a blue tint, maybe a dark skybox, but otherwise it's identical to the day. Uh, open world gamers just call night ugly day for a reason. It's common sense in these games. Dying Light was made as a direct response to those types of complaints by making the nighttime in the game really feel like night. When it gets dark, you know it. It's pitch black, you can barely see five feet in front of your face, even with a flashlight. Like, that really genuinely doesn't make it a lot better. It's the sort of darkness you rarely see depicted in video games because it's so debilitating. And sure, there are plenty of games where things can be pitch black, but Dying Light deserves recognition for making its nighttime both extremely dark, but also 
impressive. It had a photorealistic look that compared to a lot of modern games, maybe doesn't hold up as good as it could, but in the nighttime still convinces in a way that looks better than a lot of modern games. And its sequel just doesn't do it. They did completely revamp how night works just recently this year, but before then, even with multiple years on the original, night really wasn't impressive. Like compare the two. Dying Light 1 just looks more next gen at night, period. At number four is Red Dead Redemption 2. Even with no next-gen port in sight, Red Dead 2 remains a visual masterpiece. I don't know what exactly Rockstar did with this to make it look so damn good all the time, but to this day, it's one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Day or night looks amazing, and, and you could talk about the day, well, all day, but this is a list about nighttime graphics, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. Like Arkham Knight, this game doesn't have any built-in ray tracing, but what it does have is one of the most remarkable remarkable meldings of visual design and technical wizardry that created a game where any random screenshot looks like a painting. That's what's unusual about Red Dead 2. Rather than going for strict realism with its effects, it has a hazy, almost painterly visual style that makes it look more real than reality. Maybe it doesn't make sense when you say it out loud, but if you spent a lot of time with it, you know exactly what I mean. The streets of Santini at night, the rolling hills of New Hanover under a starry sky, or the oppressive dark darkness of the grizzly mountains during a snowstorm. So many places in this game feel completely different at night. The game world is massive, and with a lot of different atmospheric effects and possible times of day, somehow the game manages to always look amazing. It's not cutting edge anymore, but the visuals are still amazingly good and stand toe to toe with games that are years ahead of it graphically. That poor kid. I ain't been a good father to him. I hope he's okay. At number three is Ghostwired Tokyo. Along with Cyberpunk, no other game out there completely captures the vibes of nighttime in the city like Ghostwire Tokyo. Tango Gameworks has always excelled at creating extremely detailed settings, but Ghostwire Tokyo is their first foray into a quasi-open world. The map is much bigger, but the carefully crafted details are on the same level, if not better. Set in the district of Shibuya in the heart of Tokyo, Ghostwire is filled with fantasy elements and fantastical visuals, but the realistic recreation of Tokyo at night is stunning. There are authentic details everywhere, carefully recreated with the utmost precision. Of course, the ray tracing and the rain slick streets reflecting the neon signs all over the place help sell the illusion, but it's just everything together that makes Ghostwire such a good nighttime vibes game. And number two is Dead Island 2. If there's one thing that's honestly impressive about Dead Island 2, it is the graphics. The game, it, I mean, it's really impressive how good this game looks at all times, but really at night. It's not an important gameplay change like in Dying Light. Night in Dead Island 2 basically means a few more zombies. Not a lot, but some. A noticeable amount. But the visuals in these sections are just really good. The game has kind of a video camera aesthetic where the way the light works doesn't exactly look how it would in real life. Like it's almost uncanny how much of it looks like light when captured by a camera. It's got that super harsh lighting you can only see in found footage movies. And it adds a layer of realism to the game's lighting effects that most games just don't have. It gives the game this uncanny visual style that can be very realistic in a way few games have managed. I've seen a few games try this sort of lighting effect before, but Dead Island 2 just does it best. And finally, at number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare from 2019. It's a few years old at this point, but when it comes to darkness in video games, I don't think any game has done it as good as the Modern Warfare reboot. This game is all about darkness. Like most of the major missions take place at night, and nearly all of the game's most memorable moments have to do with darkness. There's the obvious things to talk about, like the mission set in Piccadilly Circus, which is an incredibly detailed recreation of the square, or the clean house mission, where it remains probably one of the most immersive, intense experiences in any Call of Duty campaign. 
campaign. But if there's any sequence that better utilizes Knight in this game, it's the segment where you're defending the embassy from attack in the dead of night and the enemy starts shooting out the lights. A lot of these moments are both incredible in terms of visuals, uh, like they look nearly photorealistic, but they also manage to capture the feeling of warfare in a, a way a lot of games, even in the series, don't. Compared to a lot of other games on this list, Call of Duty has a lot working in its favor. It's an extremely linear FPS where every moment is carefully scrutinized and examined to make it look as good as possible. Like, few games really get the kind of luxury this game does, uh, but you cannot argue with the results. And pull security away from the Russian base, leaving it open to an attack. We must hold nothing back. Too far on that path, and we lose ourselves. Get set for the airbase attack. Be safe. Alex, take these charges. Couple of quick bonus games for you. Dead Space 2023. Uh, I mean, Dead Space is kind of not really a night game. It's set in space, though, so there's a pretty keen absence of light, right? This remake, uh, I don't know if it qualifies for the list because of the fact that it's not really a night game. I still think it deserves special mention for the lighting effects. Even with all the horror games with amazing visuals this year, Dead Space, uh, it still stands out for the stark and intense darkness that's often punctuated by intense beams of light. And even the original game honestly stands up nowadays. It shows its age, but looks good. And the remake just takes all of the things that it did right and magnifies them by a lot. Next is A Plague Tale Requiem, another game with some incredible lighting and art design. The Plague Tale sequel goes to some pretty dark places, but it's always stunning when it does it. The part that really sticks out in my mind is when you're sneaking past this shoreline filled with guards. It's swarming with rats, there's bonfires, they're your saving grace from the killer swarms, but they're also a risk of being caught by the wandering guards. Requiem is filled with amazing nighttime scenes like this one. The art design's some of the best out there, while also being a technical powerhouse that is going to bring some lesser PCs to their knees, but even without all the crazy ray tracing turned on, this is a stunning game. And finally is Hitman 3. A special mention goes out to this game and its amazing art design for some of the levels. If you're talking about insane night graphics, I have to mention the end of an era, a mission that is set in a Chinese city at night. The whole place is just a ray tracing playground meant to put these effects in the best possible light, and yeah, it looks incredible. It may not be super different from a lot of the other games on this list, but it was one of the first to incorporate ray trace reflections into a game, so it has to be mentioned. And, and on top of that, it's honestly still one of the best implementations of it, so there's also that. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.